if you're setting up security policies and security procedures in your organization and you're starting from scratch, you may not even know where to begin. Fortunately, the National Institute of Standards and Technology has a special publication, 800-53, that goes through things that you should think about when creating these policies and procedures. Some of these are based on technical requirements, setting up 802.1x, getting biometrics, setting up firewalls in your organization. Other policies and procedures might revolve around management, making sure that there's testing that's done. There's long-term budgeting that goes into securing your particular organization. And of course, there are operational procedures in there as well. You can have lunch and learns and how you would make sure your users know about these security concerns. Disaster recovery is an important consideration for security. And of course, response planning. If there is an incident, you want to be sure you know exactly how to respond to that. The policies and the procedures that you create are going to be worthless unless people know about them. And of course, putting them on the internet doesn't do very well. People are not going to proactively go to the internet to read through your security policies. So it's very common to do a very mandatory training session with all of the users. And this accomplishes a number of things. First, they get to see you. They know who you are as the security professional and the network team in your organization. And then they understand what the policies and procedures are. And if you're trying to get across the concerns and the need to keep your network secure, this is a great way to do it. The policies and the procedures you set up and train your users on are things that will affect the entire organization. There should be some best practices you put in place. For instance, when someone gets a virus, how do you deal with that system? Does somebody simply visit the workstation and remove the virus? Do you re-image the system? Is that computer swapped out for a completely different system and then the infected machine brought back to the lab? Do you have a policy when visitors come in? What is the policy? Is identification required? Do people have to sign in? And what do you do if there is a security issue? If somebody notices that someone doesn't have a badge or somebody suspects that some of the data inside of your organization is leaked out, how do you deal with that? There needs to be policies and procedures for all of those. You also need to train your end users for those policies and procedures. And some end users will get different training than others. There may be people with mobile devices that need additional security training. You might have different departments with different needs. The accounting department, for instance, may have different security concerns than shipping and receiving. And of course, it may be done by operational function. Somebody in a remote site will have different security requirements than somebody who's at the corporate office. Somebody who's in manufacturing is going to have a different set of security concerns than somebody who might be in a warehouse. These policies and procedures can be difficult to get documented and to train everyone, but they can be critical for maintaining the security of your organization.